Hello guys, welcome to this series. Hope you enjoy. Solo Cultivation in the Apocalypse Chapter 1 On a December morning, Hidori, who was standing on a bridge, took a glance at the babbling river below. Standing near the iron railings, Hidori stared at a black, eleven inches wand that had a thick bottom and a pointed, slim end. Then, Hidori turned around. Thanks, he lifted his arm and threw his wand over the bridge with all of his strength. His hood slid down, revealing his dark black hair. His bangs, that were covering his eyes, bounced, revealing his deep blue eyes. Hitori's wand made an arc and reached its peak before it fell into the river, then drowned away. Hitori stood there, staring at the horizon. He then walked down the bridge. Hidori was surrounded by different shops, Tokyo's people, and a few houses on his way down the street. He finally reached his destination after a few minutes of a slow walk. He took a deep breath and entered the city v arcade. Welcome. He looked at his side, a morning fairy welcomed him by bowing her tiny little head. Hidori nodded, he walked to the counter. The lady at the counter welcomed Hidori with a smile. Welcome, Hitori-san, she bowed her head, the game, Monogatari, I guess? Hidori pulled out his card and gave her a nod. Please. She accepted his card and asked. For six hours, I presume? Hidori stared at the beautiful smile for a while. She knew Hidori would ask for the regular six hours because that was the duration of his school hours. Hidori replied, No, make it four for today. His unusual reply stunned the woman. A slight frown appeared on her face and the smile faded. Oh, sure. The lady started checking out Hitori's game card. Skipping school for only four hours today, sir, she asked in a teasing tone. The lady lifted her eyes to look at Hidori while doing her work, but Hidori looked beyond her. He lowered his eyes and fixed on her, without saying anything. She smiled once again and processed Hitori's order. That will be 600 yen, Hitori-san. She stretched out her hand to hand Hidori his card back. Hidori took out 600 yen. I do not know what you are talking about, he turned halfway after he paid his charge and grabbed his card, I never skip the school. Hidori turned around, took a glance at his card to check the console station's number that was marked on his card, and walked up to the console station allotted to him. The counter lady's mouth dropped open, she was left stunned by the young man's reply. Still, her smile made its way back to her face. Hitori-san. She shook her head. Hitori sat on his chair and inserted his gaming card into a magic circle slot that had appeared on the console station. While Hidori made himself comfortable in his seat, a magic circle appeared above his head, then a faint magic circle formed above Hitori's head. When the logging process was done and the game's menu screen appeared, a message flashed on the magic screen. Inbox plus 100 messages. His eye twitched. He opened his inbox with more than a hundred messages even when it had not been even a single day since he last logged in and checked his inbox. He started going through the messages, most of them were, I will kill you, or, fuck you, you little cheater, or, he is a beta tester. I am sure of it, or, damn you. Give my loot back, or, you dared to kill me, hand me my equipment back. You shitty fucker, I want my items back immediately or else I will kill you in your own house. Yes, most of them were death threats. Almost more than half of the messages were filled with death threats. Hitori had won the items legally in fair and square battles. You cannot blame him for being better than them at gaming. He let out a deep sigh. He ignored all of the messages and searched for a specific someone's message. He swiped up and swiped till his eyes fell on a message by Daichi the assassin he moved his hands quickly to the screen and opened the chat. Yo, my friend, ping me when you are online, the message read, let us finish the remaining quests. 
Hidori had to log out early yesterday because the new quest, yesterday, would have taken more than an hour to complete, but he had no more than 30 minutes, so he had decided to stop for the day. Hidori opened the keyboard and it appeared on the table's corner. He typed his message. I am back, let us go, he waited for his friend's reply. Daichi the assassin was online so Hidori did not have to wait for more than a minute. Ah, I was waiting for you, Ryu. I will meet you in my room. Hidori texted. Sure. Hidori closed the chat window, leaned back into his chair, closed his eyes, and clicked on the login option. Monogatari, the Kingdom's Myth Games logo appeared in Hitori's mind. The logo represented the game's name written in bold kanji letters with castles and soldiers in the background. The game loaded, and soon, he was transmigrated to the game. Chapter 2 The walls of the room Hitori stood in were covered with paintings and other decorations. There was a red royal carpet spread over the floor and a king-sized bed beside Hitori. Hitori glanced to his side, he saw fresh fruits that sat in a bowl and different types of drinks placed by the side. He lifted his head and saw several servants waiting for him. A person covered in a black ninja suit popped from the ground out of nowhere. Yo, my friend. Yo, Daichi. Hidori did not take a look at Daichi. Daichi let out a small laugh when he greeted him. Without wasting another second, Daichi ran out of the room. Come on now, let us complete the remaining quests. Hidori watched from his spot till Daichi was out of the room. Yeah. He followed Daichi. They both walked down the damn big hallways decorated with all kinds of stuff, paintings, flowers, posters, lights, and whatnot. Daichi turned to the right and Hidori followed him. They walked down a narrow hallway, then stopped in front of a huge door. Hidori had to move forward, knock on the huge door, and tell their game names in order to enter the room. It is Ryu and Daichi the assassin. The game verified his identity. For guards who stood near the doors opened the door and bowed when Hidori and Daichi walked in. From the middle of the room. Ryu. Came the broken voice of an old man, my son. He continued. Hidori rushed to the bedside. The NPC ministers who stood next to the old man quickly stepped back. Hidori crossed the huge room and stopped near the old man lying on his king's bed, deathbed, actually. Ryu. He muttered once again. The man raised his arm slowly with struggle. Yes, father. He leaned down and grabbed the old man's rising hand. My son. The old man kept staring at Hidori, I will have to apologize. Even after all you have done for our kingdom. I still want you to fulfill my last wish. Such a typical code. The man looked down and pulled a letter from underneath his covers, then he held the letter in front of Hidori. This letter. He started, I can trust no one with this letter but you, he spoke in his weak voice, it is my last wish, Ryu. Please deliver this letter to my dear old friend, Sego. The old man stopped talking. Hidori took the letter in his hands and the man spoke once again, I trust you, son. Yes, father, the man closed his eyes and went back to sleep with a relieved smile on his face. Hidori turned to Daichi. They both came out of the castle and rode their horses down the kingdom after rejecting the help from their servants. Just when they had reached the border of their kingdom, a small hut that rested in front of the dark forest came into their sight. They both got off their horses, walked up to the hut, and knocked on the door. Sego-san, it is Ryu, Hidori called from the outside. The next moment, they heard a click sound and the door opened. Oh ryu Another old man with a strong body frame, masculine face, dark features, but a kind look on his face opened the door, and Daichi the assassin Kuen, please come in. He moved away and welcomed the two players in his hut. He walked to his hut's wooden kitchen counter. What brought you two to this old man's hut? 
he asked as he stopped in front of a closet. Sago pulled out two chinaware cups and presented them to the young players. What would you like to drink, he asked. A sweet potion, please, Daichi replied. The man took his wand from the side of his light brown color robes. A my potion, he chanted with a swing of his wand, and a pink color liquid appeared in the glass. Go ahead. He turned around after he put his wand inside. Hidori lifted his cup and took a sip. Sego-san, Hidori placed his cup down, father has sent this letter for you. Sego stopped whatever he was doing and turned around. That old man. I cannot believe he is on his deathbed. Sego turned. We two cultivated together since we were teens, I never thought a time would come where we both will have to say our goodbyes. Sego walked up to Hidori, Hidori got up from his seat and handed him the letter. Only if he had kept cultivating, he would have become an immortal like me. He took the letter, like you, he added, and like your friend. He pointed the letter at both as he took their names. He looked down and opened the letter. Only if it was not for that damn traitor. Sago held the letter in his thick, muscular hands and started reading it. After a few seconds, Sago raised his head and looked at Hidori with tears in his eyes. Thanks. Hidori nodded in response. Sago turned around and went inside his hut, he went deeper, cast a spell to unlock a secret door, and entered the secret room. Hidori and Daichi heard rumbling noises before Sago stepped out of the secret room. Hidori and Daichi's eyes were fixed on the two items Sago had brought with him. Soma has requested me to honor you with this sword. He walked up to Hidori and presented him with a great sword. It is not just a sword. It once belonged to the Heavenly Emperor's son. So, use it with care. Hitori nodded as he grabbed the great sword in his hands. A message flashed in front of Hitori. Acquired level 179 Heavenly Emperor's son's great sword the cultivated Excalibur. And as for you, Daichi the assassin Kuin, he walked up to Daichi with a katana in his hands, this now belongs to you. The cup dropped from Daichi's hands. Oh. My. God, his hands would not stop shaking. The legendary assassin's katana, he screamed in excitement. Exactly at that moment, a message appeared in front of both of their screens. The last side quest has been completed. Head back to King Soma in the castle. After a few moments of enjoying their victory, it was time for them to head back. Hitori and Daichi waved back at Sago as they both went away on their horses. The big gates of the castle opened for them and they both entered the castle with their horses. As the system had told them, they both headed straight to the castle. His father was sitting up straight against the back of his bed. That sword looks good on you, son, he said. Hitori nodded as he walked and stood beside his father. Yes, he had to reply to move the story forward. Soma patted his hand against a stool beside his bed. Hidori glanced at the stool before taking a sit. See, Ryu. He placed his hand on Hitori's thigh, the condition of this kingdom has covered a lot since the betrayal of your brother, he continued, and after your mother's death, he said. I am afraid, I do not have much time left with me, he dropped his head. Hidori kept staring at the old man who was taking up a lot of his time instead of progressing the story quickly. I understand. Well, true since his father stopped cultivating. But. The old man said, I cannot die without leaving this kingdom in the hands of a capable individual, he glanced at Daichi, you and your friend are my last hope, say, will you protect this kingdom? They both nodded. Wes, sir. Daichi shouted. The throne of this kingdom has been waiting for its next possessor for a while. I hereby declare you as the king of his kingdom, Ryu, he looked at Ryu with a smile, as for you, Daichi the assassin Kuin, the decision lies with Ryu now since he is the king. Thank you, father. 
I hope you will protect and preserve this kingdom with loyalty and courage. And as soon as Soma said those words, he froze. Ding. The whole world in front of Hidori stopped moving. The king, the ministers, and Hidori himself could not move. Another message flashed in front of them. Game over. You have completed the game's story mode. Congratulations. Your duo is the third in the world to complete the game. Chapter 3 Hidori and Daichi logged out after completing the game. There it goes. Hidori murmured, another game, completed. There was a tone of dissatisfaction in his voice. Ah, that was amazing. Daichi's message popped up on the message window. Yep, it was. He lowered his eyebrows, the corners of his mouth were drawn downwards and his lips were drawn in tightly. Do you want to join me for another game? Daichi asked with a muscle arm emoji. Hidori rested his finger on the magic keyboard, he took his time before he replied. No his reply somewhat surprised Daichi. Thanks, Daichi but. Oh, okay, no probs, he then added a thumbs up emoji. No, I mean, it is not you. Oh no, it is fine. Looks like I am not good enough for you, he sent a grinning face with sweat emoji. I think, Hidori pressed enter, I will be taking a break from gaming. It is okay, you do not have to explain, then another message appeared. Wait, what, he sent a surprised face. W-Y? No, it would be a waste if a player like you sits out of the field, Daichi continued, you should not take a break. Man, ITIT would really be such a waste. Hidori was not in the mood to explain, he simply decided to bid farewell. Have a good gaming journey, Daichi. Hidori texted. I hope we meet someday. It is disappointing, Daichi replied, but okay. I hope you come back soon. Yes, I hope so too, see ya. Bye. And thus Hidori had to say goodbye to his online gaming partner with whom he had played over six games within three months. Hidori exited the gaming portal and went back to the magic net. Although Hidori decided not to play games ever again, here he was, browsing through the list of top trending VR games. Passion, Hidori muttered, that is the problem with passion, it is volatile. Hidori wondered if Daichi will ever text him after a month or so, and ask him to play another game together. While going through the forums, articles, and blogs regarding the best VR game to play, Hitori's eyes caught an interesting topic in an article. It read, the best remorp game since the last five decades, when he scrolled down there were titles like, the best apocalypse, open world, kingdom building, survival game in the history. Hidori kept going through the backlinks and before he could even notice, he was already on the main server of Sony Interactive Entertainment. The forums there were booming with discussion topics like, you got to play this game before you die, and, even if you are not a gamer or a gaming fan, this game will make you obsessed over gaming, and, play this brand new thrilling addictive game. This was enough to get Hidori curious, he opened one of the discussion forums. Below, there was a link embedded. When Hidori scrolled down, it was a four and half minute trailer of a game called The Emperor of the Apocalypse. Or how it was in Japanese, Mokushiroku no Tenu. Hidori could not hold back anymore, he clicked on the video and played the trailer. The video started with an aerial view of Tokyo City on the screen. The Tokyo Tower, the tall buildings, its people, the bullet trains, just the normal. The screen went blank, the next second, meteors fell from the sky, spaceships fell, and a few billion monsters descended to the earth inside a billion capsules. The whole city of Tokyo crashed. The alien monsters went insane and went on a rampage. The trains stopped in the middle, people's blood splattered all over the city the buildings crumbled on fire, and the monsters roamed free. The plants mutated into dangerous species that science had never even thought would come true. The screams of people filled Tokyo City soon, and the whole world fell. 
an apocalypse had descended on Earth. The whole world stopped moving. Suddenly, with a beat, the screen went dark black. Some words faded in on the screen, for the world that was taken from humans. The screen faded, a scene of humans fighting back against the monsters appeared, and the letters appeared back on the screen. Humans fought back to conquer their land from the monsters. The humans gained control over the monsters. More than half of the country had recovered from the apocalypse after they had cleared billions of monsters. Till, the second wave hit. Meteors fell down, alien species were sent to Earth, and spaceships with another set of billion monsters inside descended on Earth. Again. The background music rose. An apocalypse in an apocalypse, a man said in his deep voice, a world snatched back from humans, who will conquer this world where no government rules. Only survivors live, conquer, and rule. The music reached its peak before dropping down to deep opera aria music, and the screen slowly faded. With another hard beat, supported by the opera. The element realm, those words appeared in blood-red bold color. P an individual clad in black robes smiled cruelly, he chant his magic words under his breath. As spikes of ice sprung to life and waves of water swirled in his hands, he attacked the hundreds of monsters in front of him with his fiendish ability to manipulate elements. The screen went black again. The stats realm, another man with a bulky body frame appeared in the middle of a ruined forest. He punched the ground, the ground cracked open, and he jumped in the air before vanishing with the speed of light. Hundreds of monsters fell, and the heads of another hundred smashed into bits of dirt. The magic realm, clad in purple robes that denoted her station, a woman closed her eyes to distract herself from the monsters and began chanting her spell. She opened her eyes, lifted her hand, and launched a tiny bead of purple energy that ran through her veins, towards the monsters where it erupted into a conflagration that engulfed the hundreds of monsters. In the martial arts realm a man draped in a black martial arts suit swung his arm, landed a kick, and knocked the monsters dead just by the air ripples. In the skill set realm wearing obviously seductive clothes, a woman stepped toward the army of monsters. She curled up her lips and drowned deep into her incantation. The next second, she opens her eyes and turns around. The monsters behind her drop dead as she casually walked away. The opera stopped, and the screen went dark black once again. Create your own story, the background music rose all of a sudden, and the background beats came into motion. At 2x speed, a man wearing a black cloak and sitting on a throne with fire surrounding it flashed. Conquer the world. A bulky man sat on a pile of thousands of dead monsters with his chin in his hand. Build your empire. A woman from the magic realm appeared, sitting on the top of a castle's tower, with a pile of monsters under her feet. Can you? The martial arts man sat in his dojo with serious expressions and blood on the left side of his body. He slowly opened his right eye. Become. And finally, the woman from the skill set realm flashed. She was sitting on her throne too. The emperor of the apocalypse. With a bang, the logo of the game appeared. The game's name was written in Japanese letters, with monsters on one side of the circle while the five characters from the realm on the other side, on the top was a red crown. And finally, in the end, with the same text. By Alien Game Developers, then appeared at the end. Published and distributed by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Copyright, Alien Game Developers. In the end fading scene, out for sale on 7th of June 2052, pre-order now. The amazing trailer left Hidori speechless for a while, but when he paid more attention, he noticed the game's release date. June? It is December right now, that means it was launched six months ago, his eyes popped out, and why am I not aware of this? He calmed down. He looked more at the game's gameplay setting, etc. After spending another 15 minutes, Hidori decided. This is what I wanted, this is what I was longing for, 
he clenched his fists, a game with no storyline or a plot but an opportunity to create one yourself. Hidori pulled his card out, got up from his chair, and rushed to the counter where the lady was standing with a smile on her face. How may I help you, Hitori-san? She greeted him. Um, I would like to open a gaming account for the game Mokushiroku no Tenno, Hidori ordered his set of the game. And I was wondering why you have not purchased the most popular game yet, she went down to her magic computer screen. That will be 25,000 yen, sir. She lifted her head. Hitori's pursed his lips. There goes my whole year's allowance. He felt his throat turning dry. No money, she raised her eyebrows and squinted at Hitori. Hitori sighed. Sorry. Hitori turned. It has been a great pleasure, sir. The fairy waved him goodbye as he walked out of the V-Arcade. That was such a shame. Hidori looked forward to buying the most popular game but fate played against him. Not enough money. If he still wants to buy, he would have to wait for another six months. But by that time, it would be one year since the game's release date, and everything and everyone would have progressed a lot. I guess, retirement fancies me. Hidori sighed once again. He looked up at the bright sky with no hope. Chapter 4 A van pulled in front of a lone house, and a delivery man stepped out. He walked up to the door and knocked. Yes? A woman opened the door. Saibai-san, she nodded at the man's inquiry. I have a package for you then, he stretched out his arms to offer her a package. I need your signature, ma'am, he then handed her a pad. She signed and returned the man his tablet. Thank you. Thanks, good night, ma'am. The man bowed. The woman waited at the doorstep till the man left. Is that a new trend? She frowned. Why was he wearing sunglasses at night? A cute petite woman in a black and white dress called for her master, Hitori Kuen there is a package for you the same as a maid's outfit. She waved her wand in the air. It is from your parents, she added. The maid moved her left hand behind her dress. Close. She closed the door behind her. She moved her wand forward. Levitate. The box that was in her hands moved towards a table in the drawing hall. He had dark black hair, his dark blue eyes were almost hidden by his bangs. He had a good physique, just not muscular enough. A young man came out of his room. They are not coming back this month either, are they? Oh. Look, she said as she opened the box, it is the account card of the current popular game. She gave her best to act cheerful. Did they come back? The young man, Hidori, asked once again, are they coming back? The maid finally sighed, dropped down the box, dropped her wand down, and replied, no. She shook her head, they are not. She brought her hand forward and a magic circle appeared on her hand. Appear, she muttered. A screen popped up in front of her and Hitori's eyes. Please. I will read the letter to you, young master. The letter said. Hello, Hitori. We hope you are happy with your present. It was supposed to be your 17th birthday present but here you go, the account card of the most popular game. We know you love games since you were 7, and we know you will love his game too. Enjoy the game and best of luck with your studies at the Mage Academy. P.S. Sorry, we could not make it back home this month either. We have a lot of guild work. Your mom and dad have to pull all-nighters. Try to understand, dear. Bye. We will try to come back next month. Love. Mom and dad. Heart. The maid lifted her head. Are not you going to play the game, she asked innocently with a metallic card in her hand. Hidori did not reply, he dropped his head down with a calm expression on his face, probably trying to suppress his sadness. They never come back. 
Hitori Kuen, the maid gulped, her eyes falling on the box. Oh, look. They have more things for you. She lifted the things out of the box and took them in front of Hitori's face. He silently lifted his head. A black and blue color wand danced in front of his eyes with some sort of metallic card beside it. At least hold the wand? I want to see them, not their money, he turned around and walked to his room without saying anything else. Young master? Hidori closed the door on her. She sighed and dropped her eyes to glance down at the metallic card. They even got him a premium account, must be worth over a hundred thousand yen. Hidori sat on his chair, moved his hand over his table, and chanted, Web browser. A screen appeared in front of him. Hidori went through some random videos and gameplays of the game he had seen today, Moka Shiroku no Tenu. He browsed through the internet when his eyes fell on something interesting. The Ministry of Gaming, Japan has declared the first ever VR esports tournament to happen in Tokyo. The dates are not announced yet, but there are possibilities for this tournament to be organized in the next financial year, 2053. He moved his head to his right side when he heard his room door creak open. Keep it. A warm voice entered the room. I am leaving this game card on your table, she waved her wand down. Play it, do not be stubborn. They are sending their love in the form of artifacts. I hope you understand. Hitori's eyes went wide when he heard her behind him. He got up from his chair, but she left for the kitchen. Hitori moved his eyes away from the gaming card that had the game's name on the back and a magic circle drawn on the front. Moka Shiroku no Tenu, he stopped scrolling through the damn web and clicked his tongue. He stretched his hand and grabbed the gaming card. F-U-C-K Retirement The most popular VR game with deadly graphics and a full dive system that allowed anyone with the game's account to transmigrate into the world of Moka Shiroku no Tenu. It was launched only a few months ago, yet it did not take the game to sell more than a million copies in a week. Soon it broke all of the records, being the record-breaking and record-making game in history. Hidori tapped on the magic circle drawn on his table. The magic circle lit up in dark purple light and a slot appeared in the middle of the circle. Hidori lifted the card and placed it in between the magic circle. The circle swallowed up the card, then it closed. The light was still glowing, but lighter than before. Hidori closed his eyes and rested himself in his chair. He got ready to dive into the game. A purple magic circle appeared above his head. Your account card has been scanned. He read the message. Congrats. You own a premium account card named after the Saibai family. All of the information will be processed soon. Please wait a few minutes. Just when he thought this was the time when he had to wait for five minutes or so, another message flashed in front of his eyes, which was not from the game. Unlock the solo cultivation system. Welcome to the world of cultivation. Chapter 5 The game's logo appeared in front of Hitori's eyes. Welcome to Moka Shiroku no Tenno. You are the 10 millionth player to log into the game. Your special rewards will be added to your account immediately. Please enjoy your experience playing the game. Thank you for playing the game. Something's wrong. Hidori thought as he continued to tilt his head from left to right. What kind of luck is this? He was sure after he received this message. Am I being scammed? His cold expression changed to a confused and suspicious one. Please enter your avatar's name. Hitori thought of the very name he uses and has been using for every game he has played till now Ryu. Player Ryu, please choose your class. A list appeared in front of his eyes. The list consisted of samurai, archer, burglar, enchanter, magic user, and science user. And at the end were two classes that had only one further evolution possible. Blue Mage and Magus. Blue Mage. He selected. 
Blue Mage you will have the ability to learn skills despite the class it belongs to. The growth stats of Blue Mage players will be average. At reaching level 50, you may choose to evolve the class. The class Blue Mage was somewhat similar to someone with no class, the only difference was that the class Blue Mage was considered the jack of all trades. The growth stats did not focus on any one attribute and the base stats of this class were average but better than a no class. Hidori would have chosen the magic user class but he did not want to let go of other skills that were more than just some funny spells and weapons that were not 11 inches long pieces of polished and carved wood. Hidori leaned back in his chair and waited for his avatar to be generated, the basic skills to be allocated, a normal sword and shield in the name of weapons to be allocated, and the special rewards to be rewarded. Loading the avatar, please wait a few moments. Avatar generated, would you like to change the appearance of your avatar? By default, the game chooses the player's current appearance as their avatar's appearance. Of course, players are allowed to change their appearance. Hidori had chosen the Blue Mage class, his avatar's face was covered in a hood. It was equipped with a normal common grade chest piece. A navy blue cloak covered its body from top to bottom. It was exactly like a mage's outfit. Confirm. Hitori's lips parted as he muttered the word. Your avatar has been created. You will dive into the game in five, four. Hidori adjusted himself in his chair, pulled his legs together, shoulders back, arms on the armrest of his chair, and pushed his head back on the headrest. Hidori could not suppress his excitement anymore. He was going to play the world's top game without spending a yen to buy it. He was going to be one of those million people who had already made their names in this game. 3. 2. 1. Suddenly, Hidori heard a snapping sound. When he opened his eyes, he saw the magic screen fading into black. The game did not load and the countdown stopped. He turned his eyes to check the surroundings of the room he sat in with the magic screen in front of his eyes. You have been forcefully logged out. Please make sure your console and account card are connected properly. For a second Hidori thought he had really been scammed for good. The magic console's purple light faded slowly. He sighed. Kiku-san? Why would you do that? He lifted his head and saw a gaming card flying above his head. What if all of my progress is lost? He turned his head towards the door. Come out now. A cute woman appeared from the door. He he. Young master it is nice that you are finally playing your game with pleasure, but. You need to sleep. You have a big day tomorrow at the academy, do not you? She brought her wand down, the game card came down with her wand. She walked inside his room in her nightdress. Anne. I looked at the screen before pulling your card out. She pointed at the magic screen that glowed in front of Hidori. You have been forcefully logged out. At the bottom of the screen, auto-saved. Your changes are safe, was written in small letters. Hidori pushed himself off his chair, the magic circle above his head disappeared, and soon the magic screen too. Not really a big day though. He turned around towards his bed. She walked toward Hidori and said, Ah, oh, come on, do not be like that. She patted his head. It is fine. What if you were not qualified for the first month's expedition? Hidori sat on his bed. You will qualify this time for sure. I know it. Hidori held tight his poker face. As if he hid some secret under his blank face. After Kiku left his room, he went to sleep till the next morning. Hidori, the next morning, was checking his solo cultivation system, he was going through his status screen. He had gained a system last night, and now was just getting its clear view. Name, Saibi Hidori. Title, Solo Mana Cultivator slash Fire Element User. Profession, Second Year Student at the Mage Academy. 
Skill set, Mana Shujin, Mana Master, High Nomaha, Fire Magic. Cultivation Skill Set, Mana Usage Cultivation, Meditation Cultivation, Soul Liquefaction. Mana Usage Every mana you use, you will cultivate more mana to reach the threshold of a particular cultivation domain. Soul Liquefaction, Liquefy other entities' souls to cultivate mana. Cultivation Mastery Level, Master of the Soul Cultivation Realm. Cultivated Mana, 00 20,000. Mana, 2750 slash 2750. Money, 1 million yen. Hidori sighed. He pushed himself out of his bed, he reached the corner of his bed to stand up, but the door of his room banged open. Young master. Wake up. It is time for you to go, oh, you are already awake. Kiku was dumbfounded. He pulled a black jacket from the hanger. At least knock, Kiku-san. Ah, you are ready too? She studied Hitori. Black jacket, blue t-shirt inside. Dark black track pants. Perfect school uniform. He looked up at Kiku who was back in her maid outfit. HM, breakfast? Of course it is getting ready, she went back to the kitchen. Hidori followed Kiku before he stopped near his table and stretched his hand. He grabbed the gaming card that lay on his table, his hand twitched on contact with the cold metal. Breakfast is ready. Hidori hummed. He walked out of his room, firmly closed the door behind him, and locked it. All right. Let me teleport you to the academy. Kiku came back from the kitchen after washing the breakfast plates. And no. Hidori suddenly got up from his chair in panic, his hair flew up in the air as he stepped back, I, I mean. Kiku's happy, cheerful eyes turned into a suspicious glare. I mean, it will take a huge load of your mana, right? The academy is not far either, I will just walk to the academy. He came back to his normal self. His blue eyes gave Kiku a hint that Hidori was hiding something from her. She backed off. Let me see you off. Sure. He sighed softly before walking to the main door. Only if I could teleport myself to the academy, he complained, out of nowhere. You cannot teleport yourself, that is the drawback of this spell, Kiku told him in her cheerful tone, although you have the talent. She added as a mutter. Said something, Kiku-san? Hidori turned around at the door. Ahem. Uh -huh. Have a great day at the academy today. I really hope you qualify for the expedition. Hidori could not take Kiku's full of hope and encouragement smile out of his mind that he last saw before leaving the house. Hidori lifted his head and saw a direction board hanging long and tall in the air without any support. The direction board read, left for the magic wagon station, and straight for the city the arcade. Hidori pulled his hand out of his jacket's pocket. This card. Registered to the Saibai family. What did it really mean? Someone had already registered this card to Hitori's name? Who else would it be except his parents? Hidori grasped the account card tightly in his hand while looking at the direction board. He dropped his head down and pulled the account card back into his jacket's pocket. And finally, he made a decision. Hidori started walking towards the city V Arcade. Chapter 6 Hidori arrived at the V Arcade. He walked up to the man who was standing at the counter to ask him for a console station. I would like to play Mocha Shiroku no Tino, this is my account card. Hidori pulled out his gaming card and showed it to the man. The man glanced down at the card and was about to head to his computer when he suddenly stopped and took a look at Hitori's card once again, the man double-checked his account card. Then he raised his head to glance up at Hidori. Hidori moved his eyes behind the man to avoid his strange stare. Behind the man, there were countless action figures of the legendary characters from the game for sale the game's logo as a poster, etc. Would you like station service? 
The man went back to his computer screen and searched for the best console station available. Hidori said, I do not want any station service so please do give me a cheap station. As long as the station has enough magic net bandwidth to support the game, I am fine. Hidori looked up at the man who stared blankly at Hidori. As you say. After a few seconds, the man handed Hidori his card back with a QR code sticker on it. Thanks. Hidori accepted his card and turned around. Next to the QR code, the station number and playtime were written in small letters. Hidori headed to a console station that was located at the end of the VRcade's fourth alley. There was a magic circle drawn on the table, a magic case to keep your valuables safe so they can immerse in the game carefree. Just four stations away from Hitori's station, he saw another boy who was immersed in the game. There was a magic circle on the top of his head. Another guy who does not want to go on those shitty evolution expeditions. Hidori moved his eyes away from the young mage whom he had not recognized, though, by his uniform, Hidori was sure that the kid was from the mage academy. Hidori made himself comfortable in the chair, placed his card inside the bright magic circle, and finally, Hidori got ready to experience the game. You have has logged in. A notification from the game appeared. Hidori opened his eyes. He lifted his hands and saw them covered under a navy cloak. He lifted his blue eyes to look around him. Destroyed buildings, collapsed pillars, and in front of him was a broken, rusted water fountain. No roof, and the night sky was visible. Hidori turned his head to two players who appeared out of thin air. The road to the dungeons is too dangerous though. You are a noob. More appeared in the main hall. Some went out from the front door and disappeared into the outside world. Then Hidori caught two more players who spawned beside him. One of them, a guy who looked more serious, asked, What is today's plan? How about we attack the zombie dungeon today? Zombie dungeon. A player who was covered in a purple robe pulled open the game's map. It is far from here, and it is a level 25 zombie dungeon. Yeah, we can take it, can't we, said his partner who wore a thick red samurai kimono that clearly explained his class. H.M. But there are a lot of unclassified monsters in the way. And if we are going to a dungeon that is far away then we will have to fight numerous. Oh, stop. My strategy master, leave it to your samurai friend. Hitori saw the player's avatar. Strong jawline and he had a muscular face structure. He had deep green eyes and red-brown hair. No, Hirohito, we need to plan first, his partner took off. Uh, you. His partner, Hirohito Kuen, started running out of the building without waiting for the strategy man. Hitori raised his head at the running players. Pretty good names. He muttered to himself. Above the heads of both of the players, they had their names in level. The samurai's name read, Ronin Samurai, level 18. And the strategy man's name read Rotten Mind, level 17. Hidori ignored them. He saw there were many players around him. Some were planning their strategy for today's gameplay. Some were thinking of exploring the wild and killing a few unclassified beasts for extra experience points. On the other hand, Hitori's goal and plan for the day were clear. To explore this game's world, of course. First things first, Hitori thought. There is a basic rule of any video game. You first find an NPC as soon as possible and get a quest from him, which will set you on the path of your story. Hitori had hoped to see a village or a town outside, where he would find lots of NPCs roaming around, having nothing to do and just waiting for a player to knock on their doors. Hidori walked to one of the gates of the building that led players out of the building and into the apocalyptic world. But... Wahawa! As soon as Hidori stepped out of the collapsed building. Gagra! He did not see a single village, not a single town, in fact, not a single hut or a building. 
Not a single non-playing character in his sight. So this is an apocalypse? Hidori pulled his bare hand in front of him, Hi no mahu, he muttered. He saw a bunch of monsters roaming around like crazy. Fire blast. He used the most basic spell that was taught to him at the start of his second year at the Mage Academy. And thankfully, he had gained the fire element skill so he was free to use spells regarding the fire element. Fire came out of his bare palm. A skeleton-type monster with tentacles spreading out of its body from everywhere took a head-on hit and got eliminated. Killed a level 6 normal grade unclassified apocalyptic creature in the apocalypse. Gained 50 EXP. Mana usage cultivation skill activated. Cultivated 50 mana, 50 twentieths, 000. Soul liquefaction activated. Cultivated mana, 100 slash 20, 000. Collapsed buildings, broken down houses, vehicles turned upside down. Dead bodies of humans and other monsters lying around on the field. Dried up, withered trees, fire burning wildly in the far distance. Several unclassified, disgusting monsters ran around the field, trying to chase down other players and some NPCs who had only one job of shouting for help. Some of the monsters had weapons in their hands. Such as advanced guns, swords, sickles with chains, hammers, spears, etc. A few monsters had wands in their hands. Wonder how they were even able to chant the magic spells? But among them, almost half of the monsters had a skill or power of their own. One threw fire, another used its hard shelf to knock out the players, one used its speed and power, and another attacked the players with its claws and chew them in its mouth. The words of previous players ranged in Hitori's head as he continued killing the monsters coming after him one after another. Damn, the road to the dungeons is very dangerous. What is today's plan? How about we attack the zombie dungeon today? But there are a lot of unclassified monsters on the way. Hidori remembered what the player in a purple robe, the rotten mind, was talking about. I should have come more prepared. Hidori sighed in regret before he finally charged at the monsters himself. The door closed behind Hidori. Kiku waited till Hidori had left, then Kiku's eyes directly fell on a room door. I should not. Kiku clenched her fists and turned around, I should not exploit the young master's privacy. With that, she got back to work. She first started cleaning the house. With the help of her magic enchantments, she made the broom do its work on its own while she went to the kitchen. Kiku sat on the kitchen counter and supervised the actions and commanded the tools to do their work. Pots came out of the cupboard, the gas stove lit on itself, and knives cut the vegetables on their own. This in exchange sucked a lot of her mana. But it does suck less mana than the amount of energy and time she would have needed to do the work herself. What must he be hiding from me? She took a peek at that room door, he never. She stopped all of the work and started heading towards the door, locks his room door. Kiku took small but quick steps and reached the door. A wand appeared in her left hand as her right hand grabbed the doorknob. The door did not open. Hitori Kuen. Forgive me. She pointed her wand's tip at the doorknob and said, Burglar's magic, unlock the door. There was no need to even push the door. As soon as Kiku cast her spell, the door opened on itself and gave a view of Hitori's room. Dark wooden walls, green trees visible from the window, a bed that sat in front of her, and a console table right next to her at the entrance. She took a step inside the room, then another. She kept walking till she was inside the room. Why would you lock the room? She thought with a cold and dead expression on her face. The opposite of the expressions that she had a few moments ago. Chapter 7 The whole field was in chaos. All kinds of monsters were wreaking havoc, many players shouted for help, and some were stuck fighting the monsters for a few hours now. 
Amid this mess, a player shouted, Hey! Oi! That is mine! Unfortunately, that player had dropped his guard and was soon slaughtered by a monster. Another player who was meters away started looking around himself. Hell, where are my drops? He stared at the empty ground in confusion. I am sure I killed a zombie, where is my drop then? No way. My treasure is gone, another player, a woman shouted as she threw her weapon on the ground. Who the fuck took it, she demanded. The shouts flew through the air and soon reached Hidori, who was still dealing with a few unclassified monsters. Hidori released a fireball from his hand. The fireball soon split into three balls and took down three monsters at the same time. Hidori turned around to see the monsters he had killed since the beginning of the game. He saw numerous things shining on the ground. The bodies of a few monsters had disappeared, but there were still more than half of the monsters' bodies lying dead. Besides their bodies were mana gemstones and dropped items. Weapons, charms, enchantments, defense items, storage items, etc. I better collect them, Hidori bent down to pick a drop when it suddenly disappeared. Did the game. He saw another drop item disappear all of a sudden. He silently pulled his arm down, Hidori got up from the ground and kept staring at a player who had stolen his drops. Although the player was not visible, it was obvious that someone was stealing the items from the drop's pattern of disappearing. Still a noob. He does not even know the basics of scrap picking. Murasaki Ju LV 20. Speed 54, power 33, magic 25. Equipped. From the side of his hips, Hidori pulled out a dark purple gun. It was bigger than a pistol, yet shorter than a shotgun. Black dark blood fell everywhere. Pretty nice. Hidori glanced at the gun in his hands. A dark purple bullet, enchanted by his mana, came out and blew another monster's brain. Hi Nomahu, Ring of Fire. Hot orange and red flames of fire covered Hidori in a circle. A monster still tried to attack Hidori but was burned down even before its snout could pass through the Ring of Fire. Hidori pulled the gun straight in front of him. He could not see the moving player as he must have used an invisible spell or potion or a berry. But his movements were clear. Hidori aimed at the player, the top of his gun moved from left to right, up and down. The number of monsters Hidori killed exceeded 50, there were plenty of drop items around him. That bought him enough time to figure out the player's position. But just to make sure, Hidori used another skill. Mana Shujin, suck. For a second, Hidori saw a glimpse of the player. Because of Hitori's skill, whatever item the player used had its effect reduced even if it was for a moment. He reduced the gun's movements, then stopped moving the gun. Hitori's finger touched the gun's trigger, he pulled his index finger. Hitori took a deep breath in and held it there. He closed his left eye and aimed his gun at the target. He pulled the trigger. The player's body appeared once again. He stopped moving when he noticed his HP had gone down by good 15 points. Hidori did not move an inch. He held his breath, patiently, he pulled the trigger once again. The scrap picker moved away from the shot. But till now, he already lost 27 health points, unless that player was a high-ranked one, he would die soon. Hidori paused once again. Each time the bullet hit the scrap picker, his body would glow. That player was confused about how someone would have his position figured out. He started to look around while he continued to run at an average speed. He saw nothing but monsters dying everywhere, a few dropped items lying on the ground. He could not dodge the bullet once again, but thankfully, he got hit on his waist in place of his upper body. So the damage was relatively low. It was perfectly on his waistline, where the bones were. After three shots, Hidori figured out the player's escaping strategy. Therefore, he did not pause after the third shot. 
The scrap picker took three shots out of five bullets fired at him. Time was the time for Hidori to reload his gun with mana-covered bullets. Just who the fuck is this player? Is he some kind of sniper or an archer, he looked around, but it is not possible unless he is a high-ranked player. The sniper was a class that players would later evolve to after reaching a specific level. It has not been six months since the game was launched. And to think someone would reach the top levels by now, it was hard to be true. But even Anaji san has not reached the evolution level yet, he grunted and tried to find a safe place but there was none. This area. The scarp picker's eyes turned to the area with a big fire lit in the middle of the ground, this area has lots of drop items in comparison to other, he ducked a bullet, that means, he turned his head towards the direction the bullet came from, from the fire. Inside the fire was Hitori who again reloaded his gun. He continued shooting at the scrap picker before he could run out of sight. TCH, guess I will have to stop for today. He ran away from the man who fired at him from the ring of fire. When Hidori saw the player was running, he stopped shooting him. Now he had become invisible once again. Fortunately, by now, Hidori had learned the noob's moving pattern. Full blast. Mana overdrive. Hidori muttered the spell while he aimed his gun at his only target, the scrap picker. The gun turned dark purple in color. A small sphere of energy formed at his gun's tip. He pulled the trigger. Speed increased, power increased, magic increased. Shot. Critical hit, headshot. Minus 30. Player Emperor's scrap picker has been killed by player Ryu. Chapter 8 Thanks for collecting the drops for me. Hitori's blue eyes sparkled with fire. The ring of fire that surrounded him started to extinguish. S. Someone killed him? No way, who did? Someone named Ryu, H. He killed the emperor's scrap picker. Shit, then will he not take all of our drops? Fuck. A gang of more than 15 players marched towards Hidori. Hidori pulled his gun down and ran towards the emperor's scrap picker's dead body. The flames moved along with him. It had been more than two months since the rumors of a scrap picker went viral in the forums, in the chats, and on the websites. In this open field of the apocalypse, a wild scrap picker was stealing other players' drops. Because all the players were unhappy with this rookie scrap picker, he was listed on the wanted list. The prize for killing this scrap picker only once was 7,000 yen. When Hidori got close enough to the dead body of the scrap picker, lots of bright shiny things surrounded its dead body. Weapons, equipment, money, mana gems, new skill modules, treasures, and whatnot. It is him, a player shouted that is the player Ryu who killed the scrap picker. He is stealing our drops. Kill him. Gained 145 EXP for killing player Emperor's scrap picker. The player you killed was on the wanted list, you have gained 7,000 yen. Hidori shook his head as he stood next to the scrap picker's body, he bent down to look for his drop items. I am not a noob like him. Acquired. Items. Storage ring LV, 8 slash level 10 chest piece slash agility booster shoes LV, 8 slash forearm plate LV, 6. Skills, leaf cutter LV, 9 slash fire saber LV, 11. Treasure, 1 epic grade treasure. Mana gems, 336. Money, 4000 yen. EXP, 6105. Leveled up twice. Level 12, 200 slash 3900. Hidori got up from the dead body. Shoot him. The players ordered a sniper to shoot him down. Hidori casually lifted himself and walked. A bullet fell in front of his leg, it was a close call. Hidori ignored the noob sniper and opened the game's map. I am on the west side and the nearest dungeon. Hidori heard a surprised player behind him. He has not taken our drops. 
The other players gathered around to see their drops placed around the player's body. H. He has not taken any of our drops. A player raised his hand. Thanks, bro. He shouted. Hidori lifted his hand and continued to walk casually while searching for the nearest dungeon. The fire dungeon? Hidori tilted his head when he saw the nearest dungeon. Hidori surrounded himself with his flames again as the monsters were trying to attack him. Suddenly, the chat window popped in front of Hitori's eyes. Chat with Emperor's Scrap Picker has started. Hidori was surprised by the sudden chat window popping in front of him. Because of you, I lost more than half of my drops. Stop, man, Hidori replied. You just stole other players' hard work. I do not know about them, but since it is my first day, I want to keep what I earned. Huh? First day? Who are you kidding, there is no way you are a beginner. I never said that I am a beginner. He will make sure you rot. Are you sure you want to block Emperor's Scrap Picker? Yes. I will report you, you will regret, the Scrap Picker who used the chat box furiously turned silent all of a sudden. You have been blocked by player Ryu, you cannot text them. Arg. After dying, the game logs you out on its own. So right now, the scrap picker sat in front of his console screen, he crushed a plastic bottle in his hand and banged the table. His forearms veins popped out, displaying his muscularity, and his earrings bounced when he bobbed his head forward. Chat ended. Hidori wandered around the field with a map in front of his eyes, but had no idea where he was headed. The monsters still had not let him go, but unlike before, he was surrounded by no more than eight monsters. M. He lifted his head and started looking around him and thought. He looked down at the map. He stood on the pink spot that implied the position of a rare dungeon. He glanced all over the barren, destroyed land, where is this fire dungeon exactly? Hidori lifted his head and then threw it down into the map. He stood on that pink spot, so no doubt the dungeon was right where he stood. The only problem was that he could not spot where the dungeon's entrance was. A monster caught Hidori off guard. It broke through Hitori's fire ring. It opened its claws and jumped at Hidori to kill him in one blow. Hidori turned to the monster. Hi no Mahu, he chanted a spell, fire blast. The monster took the attack head on, it went back and landed on the ground. Blood spilled out of its neck like a fountain. Its head blew into pieces. Cultivated mana, 80-50 slash 20,000. He curled his brows and opened the stat screen. Cultivation skill set, soul liquefaction. It was the only skill that caught Hitori's attention, he ordered the skill, active. You have liquefied the remaining mana from the monsters you killed. Cultivated mana, 10105 slash 20,000. Now that it is done, I need to find the dungeon. Hidori started moving around the pink mark in circles. If the dungeon was not visible then it meant only one thing, it was a hidden dungeon. But if it was a hidden dungeon then why and how did it show up on the map? What if it is not a hidden dungeon but has a secret passage to it? Is this one of those dungeons that have a hidden entrance, Hidori did not even get time to figure out what was going on. He felt the ground beneath his feet slip and he fell into a long underground passage. Entered a level 15 fire dungeon. Entered the fire element cultivation domain. Currently on the floor, 0 slash 10. These messages, both coming at the same time, are confusing. Chapter 9 Before you enter a dungeon, you need to know everything about the dungeon. Its deepest secrets are the wildest boss and the stupid, the silly traps that would kill you. But If you encounter a hidden dungeon that is not listed in the gameplay or the walkthrough, you have no choice but to create one yourself. Before you enter a hidden dungeon that you know nothing about, it is important to you equip yourself with the most useful items, empty your inventory for storing new legendary items, 
if you find some, that is, and equip yourself with the right weapons, does not matter if you do not like its style or color. Auto saved. Would you like to open the epic grade treasure? Hidori pulled his hand in front of him and touched the screen. Yes, he ordered. Opened an epic grade treasure. Hidori looked away from his status screen, he looked at the dungeon's entrance. It was no use to look at the stats after he had already entered a dungeon, not like he can change them right now. He glanced around him. The dungeon was, just like most of the dungeons dark. Probably to make the players feel like a lost child in an amusement park. Hidori made sure to save his progress. It would be a shame to lose all of the mana stones and other items he collected today. Hitori lifted his hand in front of his face. He kept staring at his hand before lifting his index finger. Hi no Mahu, ignite. A flame fluttered in the dark before it lit on the top of Hitori's finger. Hitori then raised his head further above to look at his health bar. His health bar was currently glowing in green, almost full health thanks to the potions he acquired during the fight. Hitori moved into the dark, eerie dungeon. With every step he took, he could feel the dungeon's creepiness. There were spiders and other insects roaming in the open. Although he was in the game, he felt the dungeon's cold walls. As if he would turn into a block of ice if he touched the walls. The ground moved, his new agility shoes stood on a platform that moved like an elevator, the platform lifted Hidori above the dungeon. The dungeon lost its creepiness, and the cold faded from the dungeon. As Hidori got closer to the surface, he felt the rising temperature. Nothing like how it was down there, it was totally opposite. The platform stopped. Hidori sighed and lifted his head. You have entered the first floor of this dungeon, one out of ten. A new quest has appeared, defeat the fire dogs, zero out of ten. It is a fire dungeon, after all. Hidori moved off the platform before it could go back again. This might be the perfect time to practice my new skills. Starting in 3, 2, 1. Blazing fire came from the other dark side of the dungeon, he threw his torch as fire lit on the floor and erupted out of nowhere. With Hitori's finger slight flick, the flames of fire left his hands and started heading towards the fire dogs. Fire against fire. He lifted his hands with fireballs in them and smiled. Let us see whose fire is more powerful. You have killed a fire dog. You have killed a fire dog, three out of ten. The count kept increasing. Hidori had no need to move from his position. All he had to do was flick his finger, then throw a volleyball of fire towards the fire dogs. Looks like mine is more powerful than yours. He smirked as he continued killing the low-level fire dogs, which did not give him neither enough EXP nor enough cultivated mana. You have cleared the first floor, with the message, two magic portals appeared in front of Hidori. Right path leads to the second floor while the left path leads to the exit. His feet left the dusty ground as he moved towards the right portal. As soon as he passed through the portal, he appeared on the second floor. Kill Minotaur, 0 slash 5. Only 5? They are not enough. Hidori thought so till he saw a Minotaur's face. From the dark side of the dungeon, a big beast with a monstrous physique came running towards Hidori. The ground shook when the beast stomped on the ground. Hidori got rid of the fireballs. Hi no Mahu, burning flame. He moved his arms past him. Nothing happened till he stretched them forward. And erupted a pillar of fire, perpendicular to his hand. The beast stood too big to dodge and too rigid to move. It ended up taking the hit head on. A grin appeared on Hitori's face. The smoke around the beast's body cleared up and he found it strange to receive no notification. A bull's head came into sight when a minotaur's giant hammer waved the smoke away. Its giant body, thick legs, long tail, and disgusting face of a bull burned to a crisp came into view. The minotaur roared its head out, 
it swung the giant hammer furiously with no sign of slowing down. As if this was not enough, behind the minotaur, another minotaur spawned. To face a minotaur with his fire element was practically impossible. He stretched his hand beside him, and his blank expression returned. Korwa Katana Level 22 Korwa Katana Equipped As the name suggested, a dark black katana appeared in Hitori's hand. He swung it a few times. The giant hammer and the black katana clashed with each other. The impact resulted in Hitori losing a few health points, but nothing happened to the minotaur. The stupid beast let out a roar and pushed Hitori back at the same time. Fire Saber Fire Saber activated. His hands set on fire, his knuckles, then his fingers, his nails, then slowly his whole hand was covered in flames. But it did not end there, the flame moved towards Hitori's katana. The minotaur behind the first minotaur roared. It did not even think for a second before smashing its companion's head. Killed a minotaur, one out of five. No it it was not me. No use telling that, what was done was already done. Hitori's katana was free for a second. He had to block another attack. Perhaps. I am using the wrong skill. He doubted. Leaf cutter, he ordered. The flames that covered his katana disappeared in a blink of an eye. Hidori blocked one more attack. But it did not last long, soon his katana moved past the minotaur's giant hammer. As if Hidori was cutting butter, his light katana sliced through the beast's hammer. He slashed through the hammer, then through its arm, and finally, the black katana moved in and out the beast's waist. Killed two minotaurs, February 5th. I need to evolve this skill. Hidori thought as he took the support of the dead minotaur's body and jumped. The remaining three minotaurs appeared at once. Hidori got ready to swing his katana and slice the butter into perfect cubes. Diagonally down, horizontally side to side, vertically up. Three attacks and the game was over. Killed five minotaurs, May 5th. Again, two portals appeared. Right to the next floor left to exit the game. Hidori gripped his katana tightly. While he walked towards the door, determined to clear the dungeon. Hidori lifted his foot, when he put one step to the other side, he stopped. I should pick the drops first. And turned around. Chapter 10 It was another floor that was dark until a bunch of beasts appear from the dungeon's dark side. Hidori pulled his katana up and softly put the katana in the scabbard. Through the dungeon's third floor, Hidori walked silently towards the end. He would have patiently waited for the beast otherwise, but not today. Kill Flame Tigers, 0 out of 10. God, Hidori groaned as he went for his katana. He heard a roar, the darkness turned into a bright orange light. A beast took slow steps forward and walked with pride. The ends of its thick paws were lightened in fire, the tip of its long tail had a small flame, and on the sides of its body, flames were burning abruptly. The tiger got close to Hidori, it took firm steps forward. Hidori took a breath, he could maintain eye contact with the tiger, but could not attack it right away. Hidori gripped the katana tightly, it still trembled in his hand. Suddenly, he realized his heart was racing. He found the beast rather intimidating. From behind, another tiger appeared. Two more, three more, and four more. The tigers moved in circles, without Hidori even realizing it, the tigers had surrounded him. They both had the intention of killing each other, both wanted to make the first move, but no one attacked. They moved in circles while maintaining strong eye contact. Get over it, Hidori, it is just a tiger. Hidori stopped. The tigers stopped along with him. But, it was not just a tiger, it was a flame tiger. A tiger roared. As if it ordered the rest to attack their prey. Hidori took a step back, the tigers closed the distance between them. 
he formed a dark orange slice in the air with his sizzling flame-covered katana. Hidori killed another tiger. Still, the tiger's intimidating ability froze Hidori in the middle of the fight, then a tiger scratched Hitori's chest. HP, 45 seventieths. For the first time, he saw his health declined by such an amount. The tigers indeed were worthy opponents compared to the dogs and the ugly bull. Unfortunately for them, Hidori overcame his fear and managed to kill them all. Entered the fourth floor. Kill goblins, zero out of ten. Hidori bit his lip as he pulled out his katana once again and lightened it up with flames. These insightful creatures. He strode across the ground towards the goblins who appeared one after another. As soon as a goblin appeared, blood showered out of its neck. Its disgusting head touched the ground before Hidori crushed the head under his feet. He kept cutting. He gave them a gruesome death, to be honest. Goblins killed, seven out of ten. He turned and found three behind him. Green skin, with an ugly wrinkled face that had bumps and holes on it. They had no clothes to wear they ran like shameless old fools. Three heads fell at the same time. Hidori suddenly appeared behind a goblin with his katana covered in green liquid. Clean. He cast a spell and the blade of his katana was shiny black once again. Hidori pulled the scabbard near his waist, and with a fast movement, he pushed the katana into the scabbard. The katana sat in its scabbard. Hidori did not bother to collect the drops, he moved towards the next floor. He passed through another portal and a notification appeared. Cleared the first phase. Entered the second phase, you have entered the fifth floor. Defeat high-level fire dogs, 0 15. Had the level of these new fire dogs increased or just the numbers gone up? Whatever the reason was, this was becoming quite a cliché part of the game, so he thought it would only be better if he gets rid of everyone before he runs out of stamina and wastes his time. Entered the sixth floor. Kill minotaurs, zero out of ten. Not them again. He pulled out the gun this time and pointed it at the minotaur. Hidori hesitated a little to move forward but at last, he had to face his fears. He slowly took steps forward and entered the portal on the right. HP, plus 10. HP, 30 seventieths. Only one healing potion now. Hidori rubbed his mouth, he threw the potion flash away as he passed through the portal. Kill high-level goblins, 15 slash 15. Entered the ninth floor. This floor was brighter than the other floors, it was lit with silver moonlight, wait, moonlight? Where the hell did the moon come down to the dungeon? Was it because he climbed up instead of down? Hidori patiently waited for the notification. He was low on health points, he had used two of the four potions earlier and now used one, which meant he had only one left with him. It would be a pity to use the last potion before even reaching the boss. One floor would make all of the difference. Come out, he thought. Come out now. It was the second last floor and, as the floor ranks up, the enemies get stronger. Hidori was not scared of whatever beast was on the ninth floor but, he liked to be ready for anything. If something can go wrong then it will go worse. And just when he was done calculating all the possible outcomes of this situation which would lead him to the boss's floor, a notification appeared. Congratulations on clearing the eight floors. The ninth floor is this dungeon's checkpoint. You can have the ninth floor to yourself. He released all the tension that had accumulated over the past three minutes. I am disappointed. Hello there, this is the end this video. Next chapters coming soon. I hope you enjoyed our time together and if I made an error somewhere, please comment so I can improve. Have a lovely day and come again.